A construction worker discovered a skeleton at a makeshift shelter on the roof. Who had been living atop the Bartha Street building? Was it the dead person or their killer? What other mysterious details are missing from the story of the Biloxi rooftop skeleton? The old building in downtown Biloxi was receiving some much needed attention before making its transformation from warehouse to CrossFit gym in September of 2019. It was Thursday the 19th when the dead body was discovered on the southwest corner of the roof. Law enforcement were called in and according to Harrison County Deputy Coroner Brian Switzer, a nearly full adult skeleton had been found. Also, a likely makeshift shelter made of tarp, as if someone had been spending time up there. No evidence of clothes or shoes were found. Now, bodies do decompose, and clothes can too, but most manufactured textiles made these days are not biodegradable, and will last decades or even hundreds of years before decomposing. Even when natural fabrics like cotton or denim decay, they often leave evidence behind buttons, tags, zippers, soles. This means that unless the dead was a nudist, someone else was up on that roof with them. Biloxi Police Major Chris D. Back said that they have investigated cases of people reported as missing and concluded that none match what they know about the remains. However, Very little could be immediately determined about those remains. Height and weight are both listed as cannot estimate in the NamUs case file, and they could not tell if it was a man or a woman. Additionally, the deputy coroner told WLOX reporter Hugh Keaton that they believed that the bones had been there for some time. They were being sent to Jackson for autopsy, and to be examined by a forensic anthropologist. How long does the skeletization of remains take? Decomposition rates vary wildly depending on a number of environmental factors. The rooftop dough was outdoors and exposed to the elements in Mississippi's hot, humid summer. According to the Journal of Forensic Sciences, it could happen in as little as six weeks. The building had been abandoned for 15 years. Google Earth images dating back to 2007 potentially show this makeshift shelter on the roof of 875 Bartha Street. However, the southwest corner of the building where the body was found is obscured by a tree. It has been stated that there was no obvious sign of foul play. Though this is not so odd to me as there was really not much evidence at all available. It does seem mysterious that with nearly a full adult skeleton, they are unable to estimate a height for the dough. What bones are missing that they're unable to estimate a height, but still consider the skeleton to be nearly full? Law enforcement have given no updates on the progress of their investigation into this dough case. Any information you have regarding the Biloxi rooftop skeleton should be directed to the Biloxi Police Department. Thank you for giving Biloxi Rooftop Doe your time. On June 18, 2001, the body of an unidentified homicide victim was discovered near the Alabama state line in Jackson County, Mississippi. According to the Doe Network, he had been dead for approximately two days. The man was found wearing a t-shirt, shorts, and warm-up pants wrapped in black plastic sheeting on the side of Old Stage Road, about half a mile from the Nine Mile Lake Bridge. His body had been additionally wrapped in carpet, bed linens, and a nylon rope. He had been shot at close range in the right temple. Some sources will report that acid had been poured over his face. Six months before the discovery of John Doe, At the end of the year 2000, a body of a woman had been found along the same stretch of Old Stage Road, less than half a mile from where John Doe was found. She had been dead for weeks, but was identified within days through her dental records as 20-year-old Jennifer Hare. It was initially unclear if their cases were connected. Beyond their final resting place, 
the victims did not share many other similarities. Jennifer was a young prostitute from Alabama and appeared to have been strangled, not shot. Three years passed before law enforcement announced a lead in the case. In July of 2004, Jackson County Sheriff's investigator, Captain Mick Sears, appealed to the public for information regarding the dead man and shared with the press that they had a possible suspect. They believed that a drug dispute had led to the man's death and announced that DNA from both the carpet and linens found on the body had been submitted to the Mississippi State Crime Lab. They hoped it could be traced back to the suspect's home and asked for witnesses to come forward with any information. One month later, in August 2004, 26-year-old Stephen Leon Andrews was arrested and charged with capital murder for the death of the unidentified man. It was reported that he had been bragging about shooting a Hispanic man over a drug dispute. Still, the Doe remained unnamed. His fingerprints, run through national databases, turned up no match. I've been doing this about 20 years, and this is the first time I've put somebody behind bars in a murder case involving a victim without a name, said Jackson County Sheriff's Sergeant Ken McClenick. It's aggravating. It's frustrating. Andrews remained in jail while the state built their case. He had been a self-employed carpenter with a drug problem and five children. He admitted to bragging about the killing, though he claimed he had not actually committed the crime. If he had information regarding the Doe's identity, he kept it to himself. Finally, four years later, in 2008, in exchange for a reduced charge, Andrews pleads guilty to manslaughter. He was sentenced in January of 2009 to 15 years in prison and five years probation. Assistant District Attorney Bryce Wiggins said, if the case had gone to trial, they would have put on witnesses who heard Andrews brag about the killing, as well as others who could identify the items the victim was wrapped in, such as blankets witnesses had seen him with at one time. The DNA evidence is not mentioned. Sheriff Mike Byrd told the Sun-Herald that he was thrilled the case was solved. There is no doubt in my mind that he was guilty of killing the man, Byrd said. I just wish we could find out who he was. The John Doe had brown hair, brown eyes, and weighed approximately 237 pounds. He had several scars on his face, as well as one on his right wrist. He is believed to be white or Hispanic, and had grain hair and several tattoos on his neck, right shoulder, and left forearm. The next few years sees several members of the Jackson County Sheriff's Department and those directly in charge of the John Doe's case embroiled in multiple lawsuits and serious allegations. It appears that four-term County Sheriff Mike Byrd had been running on a no unsolved homicides platform and was putting his desires and the department's appearance above following the law. Those that put Stephen Andrews behind bars now faced their own criminal charges. In 2013, Sheriff Byrd was served a 31 count indictment for charges, including embezzlement, fraud, perjury, extortion, tampering with a witness. That December, he pled guilty to a felony for kicking an arrested and handcuffed suspect and involving a deputy and department employee to destroy the evidence in the cover-up. Bird faced a 20-year sentence, but was given six months house arrest, followed by six months probation. He was fined $3,000. In exchange for the guilty plea, 27 felony charges and two misdemeanor charges are dropped. The state charges portrayed Byrd as a sheriff who used his office to retaliate against perceived enemies, ordered deputies and office staff to raise money for private causes, conceal a shooting at a county narcotics task force office, 
pressure witnesses to testify falsely before a grand jury, demand free lawnmower repair, and punish a female deputy who rebuffed his sexual advances. Mick Sears, as well, is implicated in his sheriff's sexual harassment lawsuit for threatening the life of a witness. By 2014, Ken McClenick has been fired from his role as the commander of the narcotics division and has been charged with perjury. This is for changing his story on a case in 2007 when he signed an affidavit for the arrest of Robert McKee in the murder of Jennifer Hare. He told a grand jury that he did not believe McKee had committed the crime. According to the federal indictment, McClenick felt pressured into withholding information by Sheriff Byrd so that he could say there were no unsolved homicides during his administration. To use McClenick's own words, this news is both aggravating and frustrating. Jennifer is the woman whose body was discovered also back on Old Stage Road at the turn of the century, and it appears that she never got the justice she deserved. Does any of this news change things for John Doe? No. But it does make his case a little more mysterious. At face value, Stephen Andrews was a cold-blooded killer withholding information on our poor John Doe, but now I'm less sure. Eyewitness testimony regarding blankets Stephen owned does not sound like it would be particularly convincing to a jury in a capital murder trial. Remember, this is what DA Bryce Wiggins tells the press that he has against Stephen. The DNA tested on the linens that wrapped John Doe's body was never presented in any trial. If it had matched the suspect, why not use it? Stephen Andrews was released from prison in 2018. Both Stephen and Sheriff Mike Byrd died in 2020. Jackson County, Mississippi, John Doe remains unnamed. Thank you for giving Jackson County, Mississippi, John Doe your time. To submit information regarding this unknown victim, please contact Crime Stoppers. In August of 2021, a NamUs case was created for an unidentified dead body that had received no press. It was for an adult female who had been going by the name of Kelly, or sometimes Baby Girl, and had no fingerprints. Additionally mysterious, the police have not released an image of her face, but list it in the case file as being in a recognizable condition. Because there's no media on Kelly, there's very little to report on. But it seems that she arrived Tuesday, June 15th, 2021, at a residence inn in Jackson, Mississippi. The name's case actually says Residency Inn, but there isn't one of those in Mississippi at all. There are two residence inns by Marriott in the area. These are nice hotels, but that summer, it seems that a person renting a room there had been allowing others, strangers, to stay in the room. And I'm not gonna speculate why or for what reason here, but the name is Case reports that the woman came up and asked if she could shower and take a nap. The other people in the room woke up to find this unknown female was deceased in the bed. The coroner was unable to take her fingerprints. A latent print examiner determined that all of her finger pads were smooth and had no ridges. Though very rare, a dermatoglophia is a genetic condition that causes a person to be born without fingerprints. However, only a handful of families carry the genetic mutation, passed from generation to generation. Some sources say only four families have been identified. A dermatoglophia appears to cause no other ill effects and has been dubbed the immigration delay disease due to the issues that not having fingerprints can cause with travel and official documents like passports and ID cards. If Kelly carried this genetic condition, it would have made her easy to identify, but law enforcement have been unable to locate her family. Sometimes, 
individuals will go to great lengths to hide their identities. That can include mutilating their fingers to remove fingerprints. If this is suspected in Kelly's case, it's not a theory that's been shared by law enforcement. She was five feet tall, 135 pounds, and estimated to be under the age of 40. She had long blonde hair with red highlights and a tattoo on her chest that may have been a heart or a cherry. She had been wearing a t-shirt and shorts, but had no shoes. Unidentified or unclaimed bodies in Hines County, Mississippi are buried in Popper's Field behind the Hines County Jail in Raymond. Thank you for giving Kelly Doe your time. She was in the Jackson, Mississippi area in June of 2021, but may have traveled from other places. If you recognize anything about Kelly's story, please submit information to the Hines County Coroner's Office.